What's going on guys? Vic VB back with a Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we have a Hyperspin PC game only build that turned into an eight terabyte build for Principle C. Let's check it out. All right guys, you know, Joe Fnaf, man, all the socials. What are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. Summertime, hanging out a lot more with the family and all that. Obviously, you would see everything on Instagram. TikTok is also booming. YouTube Shorts taking advantage, showing off a lot of PC games. Basically, I have this thing where, you know, a game will come out and I want to see if it works with arcade sticks, if I can get it to work, and then I post the hell out of everything. So, again, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? There's the link tree. Press that link and then it shows you everything from the website to recent videos to all the socials. What are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. This one should be a quick one, but you know me, I like to talk a lot. So a video that I think should be five minutes turns out to be 30 minutes because I talk. So thank you again for hanging out. But on this one today, we're going to talk about my buddy Principal C. You may have seen a video in the past where I did a switch hyper spin build for Principal C. He hit me up, he goes, Vic man, I see all the stuff you're doing with these PC games, but I'm just not good at like getting these games. Can you help me out? Can you help me out with a hyperspin build? I'll go through the whole spiel of how, you know, this all started and then how it really came out to be an eight terabyte, over 12,000 games built. So it's pretty cool, especially with the PC games. You can see on my YouTube shorts, again, Instagram, TikTok, I have this thing where a daily I'll look and I'll try to find new PC games that are you know common you know triple A titles and then also games that are like retro or arcade style and I basically have this thing where I get the game and then I like to try to see if number one will it work with arcade sticks and number two is it a game that should be played with arcade sticks uh, recently we got a great plethora of games that came out Again, I posted it on the YouTube shorts, like next Machina, somebody commented and was like, Vic, you're not pronouncing it right. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to offend, but there's a couple of games. Uh, you know, I just did two new twin stick shooters. One was a Galaxy Champions TV. Uh, we have also the new Double Dragon Gaiden, Rise of the Dragons. Again, retro style games that, you know, right now they're being designed for xbox controllers but can they work with arcade sticks that's kind of where i did this whole thing with hit the sticks yes hit the sticks normally is with like the switch dedicated konami cabinet but i also do it for pc games and for my buy vic cabinet so it's just pretty cool i don't see many people doing it uh i probably will have to do some tutorials uh i do get that a lot where people see the short and like vic how how did you get this to work with your arcade stick so i'll probably have to do something like that but all in all, just great stuff. People are making these games. I, I especially love the, the games that are retro-esque. Um, you know, whether it be 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit games. Uh, you know, there's something that draws my attention when it's like a 16-bit game. Um, for example, there's one called Wild Dogs. It looks like a Game Boy game and it's like Contra style and you're with a dog. And it's, it's crazy. As you can see, I'm just naming a lot of PC games. But... Yes, that is usually what I do like on the downtime or at night, or I should say daily. Um, I'll look out for new games. Usually I look up on Steam and see what's newly coming and new released. And then from there, I get the games. Now, Principal C, awesome dude. I would consider him an OG. He probably found me about a year, maybe a year or two after I started doing this whole journey that I'm doing. Um, again, awesome dude, shout out to him. He's always reached out to me, he's always messaged me. Again, I do have a build where I did basically just a dedicated switch hyperspin build for him he's been using it i have my opinions on especially like what i'm doing right now uh where it's utilizing these external drives um plus and minus to everything but let's kind of start so let's talk about how this started principal c hit me up he goes hey big man i see what you're doing with all the pc games i love it i love it i love it can you make me a pc based hyperspin build at the time of shooting right now i actually I, I mean, I just did a game count, but it's an entire game count. Um, we're at 47 systems, over 12,000 games, just on this eight terabyte alone. Uh, but I don't want to jump to that, just hang on. Um, we'll go back. So like I said, this original was supposed to start out with just PC games. Right now, to date, I don't know the exact number of games, 
but I do know that including PC shooter, my light gun stuff as well, because again, for me, PC shooter uh, are games that don't use an emulator. It's just kind of like a standalone. Uh, so for example, like House of the Dead remake, uh, Wild West shootout, um, you know, some of you might say, oh, that does use an emulator. It uses the mule shooter, like, yes, but it's not like I have to put it into like Techno Parrot and then it's got to, you know, that's, that's what I'm getting at. So right now to date, my PC games, that's PC arcade, regular PC games, PC racing, and the PC shooter, I am at about four terabytes alone just in that data. Um, granted, yes, some of the PC games alone, I mean, talking about like God of War, Hogwarts Legacy, just some titles to name, uh, just now Ratchet and Clank, that is a 36 to 38 gig file. It, it adds up, this stuff adds up. So off the bat, when he messaged me, I let him know that, hey man, you know, we're looking at around a four terabyte build. He basically got a deal on this eight terabyte external drive, my book. Um, you know, I said, fine, you know, send it to me, you know, think of it. Like in my mind, I'm like, okay, this is gonna probably come out. To, if I remove the PC shooter stuff, it's about, let's just call it like 3.5 terabytes. So I'm like, what are we gonna do with like the other like four terabytes? Um, so this is kind of also a surprise to uh, Principal C. He only wanted Mame Arcade. Uh, and Mame Arcade, honestly, yes, it's a lot of titles, but it's not big as far as gig wise. Um, I basically hooked him up and I just said, you know what, whatever I could fit on this, I'm just gonna throw it to you. So it went from a PC based only system, game hyperspin build to having over 47 systems, 12,000 games on it. Now again, I usually don't like to do these, especially with these external drives. There's so much coding that's going on within, again, I still use hyperspin. You could do Launchbox, you could basically take everything and put it to Launchbox, but I am the type of person that it, it ain't broke, don't fix it. I always love my hyperspin stuff. It's just sometimes like, especially when you go into like databases, you're talking about emulators, you're talking about directories and paths. I usually don't like to do this where it's an external, not to mention he already has an external that I believe I had that set to drive S. I'm gonna tell him that this is gonna be set to drive P. Um, also, I did take this second and I was like, you know what, let me see if I could get everything kind of working where I don't have to assign a drive. Uh, all in all, it's never gonna be plug and play like that, like other people would advertise. Maybe there is, I don't know, I've been at it all day and I basically just said, you know what, uh, there's only two main things. Um, basically with, with Hyperspin, I use Rocket Launcher. Rocket Launcher needs Hyper Launch Path to be set. I tried to do that in a portable kind of setup with the line, it just didn't work. So, you know, it is what it is. You're gonna have to assign this to the drive letter P and then from there you could game on. But again, it's not totally, you know, an easy one, two, three type of setup. Uh, for example, I have Xenia, I do have on this forum, Xbox Live Arcade. Um, he told me that he's gonna be using Xbox controllers for this. There's no arcade sticks with this. He's doing Xbox controllers. I personally suggest the Xbox One with the official Microsoft dongle. Use the dongle. He was gonna connect this to the Bluetooth to the PC. And I told him, you know, if you're expecting to play more than like one or two people, you're gonna have a bad time with that Bluetooth PC. Just save yourself the headache and get the dongle. You could connect up to six controllers with one dongle. So he already ordered that. As you can see, for me, I have four Xbox One controllers from my Biovic cabinet. Basically, I utilize this setup to configure all the emulators. You do have a couple of four player systems. We do have, and I'm gonna go in, we're gonna do a whole screen grab and all, I just kinda show you what it looks like. Um, but we do have, for example, like Mame Arcade. Uh, I do have um, uh, uh, Dolphin, I have GameCube, we have N64 and Xbox Live Arcade that could utilize four players. So there's a lot that went into it. Um, you know, again, he's an awesome dude. I just kind of felt like, you know, you sent me an eight terabyte drive, you know, I gotta fill it up. And uh, like I said, we're gonna do a whole screen grab and all that. Uh, again, I'm kind of doing this ghetto rigged where basically I'm just gonna screen grab from another PC and then I'll just merge it into Premiere uh, and all that. But all in all, awesome stuff. Principal C, I hope you enjoy your build. Let's just take a look real quick and let's look at Hyperspin.
All right guys, so I'm doing this in a weird way. Again, my main PC I'm working on now, it's actually a 4K display, whereas my Elgato only captures 1080p. Anyway, I'm kind of doing this in a jank way. I'm gonna just take the camera and all that. But let's start with some basics real quick. I do wanna show off how much I jam packed into this eight terabyte. So as you can see, it is called Hyper PC. And I do say it, I said it before, be sure to have this as the P drive. If you have this set up as a different drive, uh, usually when you plug it in, it's like the D drive you're gonna to wanna to go in and just change it to P and I could always guide you on that, but Principal C knows what to do with that. I just wanna kinda of exaggerate a couple of things. As you can see here, I only have 19.8 gigs open of the 7.27 terabytes. I normally don't like to do this. Um, I usually like to leave at least, I would say about 80 gigs open to 100. Uh, again, when you start playing these games and you start saving states, you know, it takes up file space and all that. So right now this is like very close. I'm personally not a fan of how close it is, but Principal C knows the deal. He could always kind of delete stuff as he plays. The other big thing I do want to stress and I kind of find it funny that people don't really understand it still. Yes, you bought eight terabytes, but as you could see, it only gave you 7.27. Again, you're, you are missing, uh, what is that? Almost six? 600 to 700 gigs that you're missing. No, I didn't remove them, that's just how it is. Imagine when it comes to 12 terabytes, 14 terabytes, or even 16 terabyte drives. It's just funny that some people don't really get it. Uh, but basically, you got your basics. I have my whole kind of setup here. I do have in this file though, in this folder, there is a bunch of install files. You need to do that. Some emulators rely on that, certain like C++ from Microsoft. Um, some stuff needs that. I do want to show off real quick though, Rocket Launcher. This way you kind of see what systems are there. I'm not going to name them all off, but again, what originally was supposed to be just PC arcade games and racing turned into 47 systems. That's the kiddo, no worries. Sorry, the kiddo. Uh, but basically again, as you can see, 47 systems. It's all their complete ROM sets. The only one that is not complete is this 3DS. Basically, once I jam-packed everything that I felt was great as far as PC games, number one, really I was aiming for stuff that was multiplayer-wise and that almost any computer could kind of handle. Um, this is what I came up with. The only system that doesn't have a complete ROM set is the 3DS. As you can see, I have four different systems for the 3DS, eShop, eShop Import, and then the Import. Um, I don't remember, I, I believe my entire 3DS kind of file setup is like 600 to 700 gigs, but I only had about 300 gigs open. So I basically was just kind of putting in stuff that I feel like he would want um, and such. So again, this these four right here are just not complete ROM sets. So as you can see, 201 out of 393. The main one, which is the 3DS, 305 out of 589. So that's the only thing. If he does play 3DS, you try to launch a game, you might get an error that says, hey, I can't find this game. That's just, you don't have the entire thing. But right now we are gonna launch Hyperspin. I do have one Xbox controller on right now. It's always good to have one on beforehand. Um, again, in principle C's setup, he's only gonna be using Xbox controllers. He's not using arcade sticks and all that. Again, this is my main 42, almost 43 terabyte build, just slimmed down and cut down. And again, I do it in a way that you don't have the media for 42 terabytes. I remove all that. As you can see though, you're not gonna see, for example, PS1, PS2, PS3. You're not gonna see that here. Everything is kind of slimmed down again, only 47 systems. Uh, it's very cool, it's awesome. We'll take a look real quick, for example, like the PC arcade side. Um, everything kind of new and recent. Uh, what's pretty cool, we'll launch this, for example. Great game, I've only honestly played the first level because um, I've been busy, but when it comes to like the PC games, uh, usually when you want to do four players for the emulator side, you're going to want to make sure that your controllers are on before you launch the emulator. This one here, because it's a PC game, I only have one controller on, but I could always add the second one later on. Again, that's only for PC games. Basically, the best way to really say it is have your controllers on before you even start the game. That's the best thing. But as you can see, we are in story mode. I'm utilizing the Xbox controller. I could do two player co-op. And again, I just turned this controller on player two when the game was actually loaded and it does work. We are A-OK -okay and good to go. PC games, keep in mind, you have to exit the game in game, okay? So 
As you can see, we're back to the main screen. My R2 is to bring it back and exit. Long press A is your enter. Inside of emulators though, your Xbox logo long press will exit the emulator. Um, granted though, sometimes depending on how your PC is, if you press that Xbox logo, you might get the Xbox game bar that pops up. You just have to disable that. That's the best way because that button is never really used uh, anywhere, even on regular PC gaming. But as you can see, you have your wheel, the PC arcade games, and then I also have the all PC games. All PC games are games that are not arcade friendly, meaning like you have story mode and such. So for example, if I go to H, uh, we're gonna see Hogwarts there. Uh, I was playing some SpongeBob before. I'm gonna just load that up real quick. Big thing also keep in mind, again, all this data is in this one drive. This goes into the fact that I've said it before. I don't wanna say the word fact, because people are like, Ugh! This is the big thing I always say, that I, that's why I kind of stay away from these. There's a lot of bottlenecking. I don't care if you agree or not. There's bottlenecking going on. So depending on like the games that you're picking and stuff, some of them might load a little bit longer than they should. But again, everything is on this drive. So example here, um, you know, you got SpongeBob. The big thing basically that I'm stressing is that sometimes if I exit a game, I might take, and I'm doing it here on purpose, it does take a couple of seconds. Again, depends on the game. This doesn't happen on all the games. I now have focus. I now have control of hyperspin. You kind of see it there that the joystick was frozen. You just gotta let it do its thing. Again, I can't stress enough, inside of hyperspin, you long press R2 to bring it back. Uh, for example, uh, I'll put on my four Xbox controllers now. So I have one, two, three, four of them all connected. Again, I'm doing this before gaming. Uh, and why not? We could play some, my favorite, which is, do I want to do The Simpsons? Only because I'm thinking about like the music. But that's okay. I should be able to kind of mute it, if anything. Again, long press A. RK stuff, I learned everybody now likes the bezels. I could set this up to full screen if you want, but I have it set up for bezels and such. But basically, we're gonna let this go. I got my player one. I got player two, I got player three, and then player four. So as you can see, four player, even arcade gaming, long press that Xbox logo, and it brings it back. Again, sometimes you might need a quick second. It either it instantly refocuses or it takes some time. Uh, one thing pretty cool that I, you know, he doesn't even know he's getting it, I did put in Xbox Live Arcade. He was basically telling me that, you know, everybody in the family is gonna enjoy this. So I was aiming for multiplayer systems. For example, as you can see, MAME with the four player setup, GameCube, N64. Uh, but as you can see here, we could do some Xbox Live Arcade. Three on three NHL Arcade is very cool. Long press A. Again, long press that and then let it do its thing. Sometimes it might just kind of stay for a quick second, as you could see sometimes with the PC games. But all in all, just gotta let it do its thing. Uh, as you can see, this ROM, you know, it's just kind of known that some of the words don't show up, but it does play. Grab my player one, grab my player two, wherever he is, player three, bring in this blue, and that's the time you want four people. So again, long press the Xbox logo, it brings you back to hyperspin. Again, sometimes coming back, it might take a second or two, no need to worry, it will regain focus. You just gotta be patient on that. Uh, we're going to some GameCube action, why not? Um, I kind of want to show off the four players, but then I have no, I don't have four arms. Um, we'll try this time splitters, why not? I believe that's a, that is an exclusive to GameCube. So again, as you can see, working great. Biggest thing I can't stress enough, this is where I, I said wave, I always say to my videos, this stuff is not plug and play. Right now, everything is mapped out to the Xbox One controller. If you're gonna use some Logitech controller, if you're gonna use an Xbox 360 controller, if you're gonna use a wired controller, I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm not gonna say it won't work. I'm not gonna say it will work. I don't know if it's gonna work. You might have to now go into each emulator and then adjust. That's usually when it comes to these arcade builds. I like to have everything physical in my hands and then a sign like that. Again, Project Canada, what a great dude. He is just a perfect example with his six to eight, eight bit controllers that he had. Um, again, he wanted NES to work with his NES controllers. I just needed that, I needed them in hand. But as you can see, uh, this is Dolphin Emulation. I do have this set like for 4K. I have it like, I don't know, 10 times 
uh, whatever the normal rate is. You can actually do four players with this. Cool. All right, let's see what I can do. Uh, except, as you can see, again, I didn't know this was a four player game. Oh, I have to enter the name. Ugh. I don't know if I'm gonna edit this, <laughs> but whatever. Let's see. Create new profile, create new. Oh, I guess I have to put in some random letters. Let's save that. And yes, as you can see, you do have your saves and stuff. Let's save that. Oh, I could have continued without saving. I'll probably do that real quick. Uh, 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 so let's press B on that. Oh, that's this one. <laughs> Again, this is just, this is where I need uh, uh, four people. So I'm most likely gonna cut this, but maybe not. Put in some BS things. Once you start, yes, yes, yes. We're gonna continue without saving. Cool, all right. I like to play some arcade style, arcade custom. I've never played this. I do remember this was like a big deal uh, growing up. I think it's basically the GameCube version of CS, uh, CS of, of Call of Duty, <laughs> Counter-Strike I said. Uh, four players ready. And we're just gonna let it load. Again, what's great with like these emulators, I have this like 10 times and that's something that I kind of have defaulted. Uh, but again, if Principal C has any issues, look at that, that's in 4K right there. Look at the graphic on it. So as you can see, we have another player here. Cool. This guy's on fire. Uh, again, and we have the last one there. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. I don't want to bore you guys too much, but that is basically it. Another great thing going out. Again, VicVP, Game Case Arcades, Principal C. I appreciate you, bro.